like to uh, introduce Terry Lynn a little more officially. Um, she maintains dual citizenship in North Carolina and Maine and is an active member in the pastel societies in both states. She's a juried signature member of the Pastel Society of America, and she's been teaching various media and techniques of art for 30 years. She judges exhibits and offers demos and instruction through her YouTube channel and her Patreon site. Terry Lynn has a passion for exploring the world and for creating original art with a focus on soft pastel paintings. Joy of life, creativity, and spiritual sensitivity are the primary characteristics of her work, artwork. Her handling of color, light, and texture convey a balance between impressionism and realism. This approach to painting is evident in a recent piece called Her Hands, which claimed the first place prize in the 43rd Open Division IAPS 2023 Juried Fall Exhibition. When I first saw this pastel, I was immediately and deeply moved. The expressive use of color, along with the varied textures and mark making came together to make a piece that touched my heart. It was all the more poignant knowing that Terry Lynn was dealing with the loss of her mother as we were starting to put this PPS show together. She managed to produce this stunning tribute and maintain her professionalism while working on our show. Terry Lynn, I greatly appreciate the fact that you persevered through your loss and stuck with us. And I encourage you all to see this painting for yourselves on her website and read her thoughts about it there. Now, uh, Terry Lynn is gonna make a few general comments about the show before we start, and then I'll open up the gallery mm -hmm. and you'll get to see the paintings. Uh, Terry Lynn. Thank you, Kathy. That was very gracious. Um, as artists, we step up to our easels and we need to ponder and ask ourselves, why am I going to paint this? What am I going to paint? Why am I painting this? And sometimes it's just to learn a technique or to practice technique, and that's important. But then other times it's to express our innermost feelings. And that's what I did with that, that painting my mom. It was helping me work through her passing. Um, I like to quote Brian Rutenberg. If you don't know him, he's a great oil painter from New York City. And he says, everything has been done. So don't worry about trying to do something new. Everything's been done, just not by you. And the world needs to hear our voices. And that's why we're artists. In this show, there's some beautiful, couple beautiful paintings by Yale Maimon. And if you don't know of her, she is uh, she lives in Israel and right now she's living in the midst of war. And you can look at her paintings and see the love and caring she has for her cats and everything around her. So our art brings humanity and love to the world. And to me, that's why I create art. In general, I, I want to thank you for the honor of being able to judge this wonderful exhibit. It's great. It was a challenge to judge it. It's such a diverse collection of art. I tried to include a variety of subjects and styles while keeping an eye on the use of the fundamentals, principles, and elements of art, and the mastery of overall techniques and the emotional impact of these paintings. Kudos to everyone who entered paintings because it's not easy. It takes courage and openness to reveal our inner souls, that is, through our paintings, to the world. Congratulations to those who have received recognition and courage to those who have not yet. You keep trying, your time is coming. Keep painting, keep expressing yourself because our world needs your voice. Every show, every judge is different. Even for one judge from day to day, a painting will touch us in a different way than it had before. Hence, I returned a number of days afresh multiple times to reconsider the show with fresh eyes, to find a consensus within myself about my response to these works. 
Sadly, a couple pieces could not be considered in the final because they went against some detail that did not follow the prospectus. We all must take personal responsibility to be sure we read carefully through each requirement and also be sure that your paintings are your photos properly cropped and are in focus. We all know that being an artist is a progression of personal growth. I encourage you to keep painting and keep submitting to shows. Don't get discouraged. Once you're done with the painting, ask what's next? Continue to grow in expressing yourself as an artist. And how do you do that? You paint and then you paint again and then you paint more and you just keep painting. You'll find your voice. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, thank you, Terry Lynn. All right, we're going to get the gallery started here. I'll be reading the names of the uh, artist and the title of their work. One moment, please. All right, can everyone see the gallery? Oh, I hope so. Okay. Yes. All right. To start us off, we have Le Minervois by Tim Williams. Fiesta Cactus by Eileen Willem. Summer Sky Over Ocean Isle by Kim Wilder Henson. Stealth Mode, also by Kim Wilder Henson. Yakety Yak by Kathy Summer. Daffodil by Price Pearson Story. Meadows in Bloom by Jenny Stalker. Sam by Jane Steelman. Pink Impressions by Cami Stadler. Harvest Moon by Betty Siska. Slipping Away, also by Betty Siska. Daytime Revel by Deborah Shea. Evening Glow by Diane Rook. Cascades by Lorraine Roberts. Brown Fish One by B.F. Reed. Bustin' Out the Blues by Kathy Pruitt. Hearing Into the Past by Laura Pollock. Casting Your Net by Mundy's Mortimer. Sun Drenched by Ashley Mortensen.
Low Country Charm by Betty Morgan. Light and Shadows in the Canyon by Terry Moore. The Day's Work is Done by Nancy Marshburn. Hartley Dinner by Yale Maimon. Orange Chicken, also by Yale Maimon. Mexico Street Scene by Cynthia Lid. Tibetan Giving Alms, also by Cynthia Lid. Small Town USA by Marla Kurzik. Autumn Birch, also by Marla Kurzik. Strong's in Lawrenceburg by Marilee Klosterman. Quiet Valley by Ann Hunter. Roots by Janet Johnson. Silver and Gold, also by Janet Johnson. Up and Over by Patty Jeffries. Eat a Peach, also by Patty Jeffries. Hanging Peppers by David Hoke. The Artist by Anthony Hedrick. Autumn Stroll by Brenda Hardin. Golden Jewels, also by Brenda Hardin. Dewberry Barn in Sunflowers by Katie Hallahan. Carousel, also by Katie Hallahan. Pretty in Red by Dee Dee Hallahan. Interplay by Marianne Gribb. Three Pair by Jerry Greenberg. Century Plant by Jeannie Galland. Prickly Pear, also by Jeannie Galland.
Starburst by Darlene Ferguson. Netherlandish by Joan Dreiser. Beauty of Backlit Trees, also by Joan Dreiser. Fleur de Nineveh by Jay de Chesery. Sparkle Creek by Francis Davies. Night Swim, also by Francis Davies. Hannah and Her Horse by Bridget Camillus. The Now and the Not Yet by Bridget Camillus. Happy Alpaca by Pearl Cohen. High Summer by Terry Carter. Gigi with the Hard G by Chris Birch. Hello, October from Shirley Buckler. Three on a Vine by Laurie Basham. And Tiny Dancers by Deb Ashton. Uh, now we're ready to move on to the gallery of winners. Uh, Terry Lynn, are you ready for this? Yes, I am. Okay. I'm going to uh, announce the winner and then Terry Lynn will make a few comments about each painting that she selected. We're starting off with the honorable mentions. The first one goes to Jean's Granddaughter by Marcia Tidy. Green's, Jean's granddaughter, a dancing pastel marks, give us a feeling that's a beautiful, creative soul within this portrait of a woman at rest. There's a thinly veiled energy emanating from within. Her oversized eyes seem to peer out of the surface and into our hearts. The dark hair and shirt create an abstract shape around the face, forcing us to look at her. There is nowhere else for the viewer to look. The artist focused us to see this honest and straightforward person for who she is. And our second honorable mention goes to Josie's Wonder by David Hoke. A moment of rest in a busy child's life. How do we know she's been busy? <laughs> Look at that tousled hair. I'm impressed by the sensitivity, soft blended marks that define the painting overall and the dichotomy of the warm light and the deep cool shadows that are used to make a strong balance in the image. Every element carries us to consider her gentle, focused gaze out the window. What has captured her attention so intensely? Oh, such a soft face surrounded by a beautiful flowing tendrils of hair. And for our third honorable mention, we have Tall Corinthian Pine by Deborah Brown. I love trees that have great personality. This one dances in the air and sunlit sky. There's a subtle composition of thirds with judicious, well-placed diagonals that add a dynamic element to break up that strong vertical trunk. 
There are confident and varied marks over the whole painting, which texturally unify the painting. I also like the subtle split complement color scheme and well-placed value changes. I could live with this tree. And our fourth and final honorable mention goes to Ancient Columns by Laura Pollock. This place just draws me. It says, come and visit. The overall scope of this artist's understanding of structure, composition, value, and color are wonderfully expressed. The distant flat landscape sets back with a soft blending, while the nearby canyon is revealed in strong light and shadow with decisive marks that define the craggy spots and the directions of each rock as it falls into the ravine. The shadowed areas of blues and purples prove that we can break the rules. Cools can be used to advance forms and the warms to receive, to recede. This is masterful. All right, moving on now to the Pastel Society of Cape Cod Award, a $150 value. We have First Flower by Deborah Shea. Here we have a clandestine encounter with a beautiful flower. To me, it's reminiscent of Georgia O'Keeffe. The artist understands the structure and physio physiology of the plant, stamen and pistils, and holds the delicate petals around them. That's all exquisite. The waxy leaves glisten behind, and that one that is backlit and translucent, it shows masterful handling of pastels in portraying a complex subject. I know just what it would feel like to touch those petals and those leaves. This is beautiful. And next we have the Pastel Society of North Carolina Award, also a $150 value, which goes to Flower Kitty by Laurie Basham. This painting to me has an understated design. I especially like the ingenious connection between the cat and the bouquet. It's as if they are almost one entity. The viewer's focus is contained by the round table edge, the curved flower tops, and the directional angle of the cat's head. The colors of the flower bounce around the painting, here boldly, there quietly, enticing the eye to follow from there into the reflection of the table and back again. This artist knows well how to compose an image to keep us from wandering away from the painting. The next three awards are our Jack Richardson Pastel Set Awards. Um, each person will win an 80 pound pastel set valued at $175. The first for best portrait and figurative is for Green Tea by Jerry Greenberg. Experienced and confident drawing is the foundation of this excellent figure painting. The proportions and relationships here are wonderfully accurate. The well-chosen details like the eyes, glasses, and lips draw us to her face, while other elements like her hands and hair take a close but secondary importance. The analogous color scheme of ochres and sage is set off with soft hints of a near complement in the ultramarine blue. Together, these create an ambience of calm and peace befitting the pensive woman drinking tea, a sensitive and expressive painting. Our next Richardson Award is for Best Still Life, going for Cabinet Bowls by Chris Birch. I, keep, I kept coming back to this painting. It's deceptively simple, yet decisively and beautifully drawn. The faithful three-dimensional shapes are rendered solidly. They feel like you could reach in and pick them up. They're not something painted on a flat two-dimensional surface. Surface, sorry. The painting reveals a deep understanding of values, which helps sets the bowls back into the cupboard and realistically sets them into each other. 
And our final Richardson Award for Best Landscape goes to Main Street by Kim Long. All things work together for good and it happens here. Complementary color scheme of blues and orange work well in a balanced variety of values. Linear and implied perspective, detailed sections of cars and houses that are offset by the restful large areas of sky and distant trees. A cacophony of elements tamed by excellent painting. I like how the telephone pole on the right, almost invisible, balances the strong tree trunks on the left, but without us really noticing it consciously. The center line in the road helps draw us deeply into this intimate portrait of a neighborhood street. It's a wonderful, classic landscape. Our next award is the Piedmont Award with a value of $200, which goes to Pawpaw's Legacy by Leslie, Leslie Hudson Tolls. <laughs> to me, this painting holds together very well, even from a distance. Underlying is a solid three-dimensional drawing of a dilapidated building. It portrays a wonderful balance of incongruities. The abandoned vehicles tucked in under the crumbling open bays add a distinctly human element and scale to the barn. Initially, I passed this by somewhat quickly, but I kept coming back to it over and over. I think it's a wonderful representation of the Piedmont area. And now we're into the place awards. So for third place, we have Smokin' by Anthony Hedrick. I like this painting even before I knew the title, but you gotta admit, what a great title, title Smokin'. This painting has masterful draftsmanship for the figure and the boxes. It's expressed in a sensitive yet confident manner. The smoke whirls about the stoic figure as we know that there are also bees buzzing wildly around him. Yet the gentle self-confidence of the beekeeper maintains a balance in the painting. In the situation, in our involvement, and in life, there's balance. This is wonderful. And in second place, we have Chasm by B.F. Reed. Here is a seemingly simple painting expressed so powerfully with a deep understanding of design and color. The inverted cross created by the dark purple doorway and the shadow under the figures solidifies the strength of this composition. Soft variation of hues in the red walls with that wonderful compliment peeking through adds interest to what could easily be a very flat shape. And those figures, bodies at rest, drawn very accurately under the clothes following the underlying bodies so well, their passive expressions focused on their phones, all glorify a daily occurrence in our lives today. The design of the upside down cross and the isolation creates created by their texting instead of talking to each other creates a huge chasm, symbolically and actually. I especially love the profile of the man on the right. It makes me want to just sit down and talk to him. For me, this painting, bam. And finally, in first place, Talking About Boats and Things by Jay DeCesare. This painting emulates so many aspects of classical artwork. The composition and balance of the elements, the strong one point perspective of lines and implied perspective lead us directly to the figures in front of that house. The artist arranged all the elements to carry the viewer to the center of focus. While, sorry, I lost my place. To the center of focus while interesting marks dance around the painting could cause the viewer's eye to dance away too, but we are always drawn back to the chatting figures. Contrast, 
detail and those dots of Winslow, Homer, cadmium, oranges in just the right spots keep us where the artist wants us. Masterful painting. All right. Very good. Excellent work by everyone. I enjoyed all the paintings and appreciate you all being a part of it. And congratulations to our winners. Um, Terry Lynn, thank you so much for uh, working with us and for making such a great show, pulling together a really interesting group of paintings. Um, it was great to work with you. Mm -hmm.